TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The United States has abandoned the Trump administration's so-called peace to prosperity approach for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, instead adopting the internationally aspired two-state solution. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu emphasizes that the Jewish state will do everything in its power to thwart Iran's ambition to attain nuclear weapons. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif emphasizes the Islamic Republic's blatant refusal to return to compliance with the 2015 nuclear agreement unless the United States lifts its sanctions and re-enters the deal itself. The United States has abandoned the Trump administration's so-called peace to prosperity approach for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict instead adopting Washington's older policy, which was first introduced under the George W. Bush administration, of supporting a process that would realize a mutually agreed two-state solution in which Israel lives in peace and security alongside a viable Palestinian state. This expected change was relayed to the United Nations Security Council earlier this week when acting U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Richard Mills, clarify the Biden administration's future intentions. Under the new administration, the policy of the United States will be to support a mutually agreed two-state solution in which Israel lives in peace and security alongside a viable Palestinian state. This vision, as I know we have just heard, though under serious stress, remains the best way to ensure Israel's future as a democratic and Jewish state, while upholding the Palestinian people's legitimate aspirations for a state of their own and to live with dignity and security. In addition to the proclaimed change of policy, Ambassador Mill also announced President Joe Biden's decision to reignite Washington's financial support for relief and works agencies that support the Palestinian people, alongside the reopening of the mission of the Palestine Liberation Organization in Washington, D.C. Ambassador Mills went on to emphasize, however, that the latest decisions should not be wrongfully interpreted. At the same time, I must be clear, the U.S. will maintain its steadfast support for Israel. Under the Biden administration, the United States will continue its long-standing policy of opposing one-sided resolutions and other actions in international bodies that unfairly single out Israel. The United States will also work to promote Israel's standing and participation in United Nations bodies and other international organizations. We hope to be able to cooperate with member states on these issues. The acting American envoy to the world body further stressed Washington's aspirations to widen Israel's circle of peace with the Arab world, yet in tandem highlighted that Arab-Israeli peace should not constitute a substitute for peace with the Palestinians. Turning to Israel's southern Negev region, where Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu responded to a question about whether the Biden administration's decision to suspend the sale of the sophisticated F-35 stealth aircraft to the United Arab Emirates pending a review could consequently harm the peace agreements between Israel and a number of Arab nations. I don't think so. וכולם מבינים שיש פה יתרונות עצומים. זה, זה שלום תמורת שלום, זה שלום תמורת שגשוג, זה שלום תמורת קדמה, זה שלום תמורת טכנולוגיה, זה שלום תמורת עתיד. אני לא רואה את זה. אני, אני חושב שזה ילך קדימה. The Israeli premier went on to answer a question on his position regarding renewing negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians in light of the latest statements on the matter coming out of the United States. אנחנו אף פעם לא אמרנו לא לחדש את זה. אנחנו חושבים שצריך, פשוט כדי להתקדם עם הדבר הזה, צריך להסיר את המכשול האמיתי. ושהמכשול האמיתי הוא ההתנגדות לקיומה של מדינת ישראל בגבולות כלשהם. זו האמת. 
וזה דבר שעדיין לא ראינו ברשות הפלסטינית. אנחנו רואים את זה, אני רואה את זה בסודאן, שהייתה איתנו במלחמה. אני רואה את זה בכל המדינות שהזכרתי, ואני יכול להגיד לך משהו? אני רואה את זה בעוד הרבה מדינות. הרבה מדינות ערביות, הרבה, יותר ממה שאתה יכול לחשוב. ואני חושב שהשלום עם הפלסטינים יגיע קצת הפוך. כולם אמרו, תעשה שלום עם הפלסטינים, תקבל שלום מהעולם הערבי. הלוואי, אבל זה לא הצליח. לא רק לי, לכל הממשלות, לא הצליח. אני אומר לך שזה יהיה כנראה שילוב של שני הדברים. זה יהיה לא פחות ששלום עם העולם הערבי בסוף יביא לשלום ולהתפייסות בין ישראל והפלסטינים. Prime Minister Netanyahu also addressed the heightened tensions with the Islamic Republic of Iran, echoing statements made by IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kohavi and Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi earlier this week. Netanyahu emphasized that the Jewish state will do everything in its power to thwart Iran's ambition to attain nuclear weapons. I said that the country that is in the middle of the country, the country of Israel, will not be able to get the nuclear weapon of the nuclear weapon to achieve this mission. I have been working for many years as the President of Israel, to achieve the nuclear weapon. למנוע מאיראן להשיג נשק גרעיני. ההנחיה שלי היא לפעול בכל החזיתות, בחזית הדיפלומטית, בחזית המדינית. אתם יודעים שהלכתי מול כל העולם כשהייתי צריך, נגד שש מעצמות, וגם הלכתי לקונגרס האמריקני. אלה לא החלטות של מה בכך. זה מבטא את הנחישות שלי שהסיפור שלנו, של המדינה שלנו, לא יאוים על ידי משטר האייתולות שרוצה להשמיד את כולנו. זה יתבטא לא רק בצעדים מדיניים, זה יתבטא גם בהרבה צעדים אחרים שאני לא אפרט אותם כאן. זה נחישות, זה ההנחיה שלי לצה"ל, זה ההנחיה שלי למוסד, זה ההנחיה שלי לכל גופי הביטחון ולכל המערכות שלנו. Netanyahu went on to reiterate Jerusalem's position, which stipulates that a return to the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran would constitute a bitter mistake. Turning to the Turkish city of Istanbul, where Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif emphasized the Islamic Republic's blatant refusal to return to compliance with the 2015 nuclear agreement unless the United States lifts its sanctions and re-enters the deal itself. به محض اینکه آمریکا تعهداتش رو اجرا بکنه و ما نفع اجرای این تعهدات رو ببینیم ما هم تعهدات خود رو به صورت کامل اجرا میکنیم و این در بالاترین سطح جمهوری اسلامی توسط رهبری اعلام شد. The Iranian top diplomat went on to reject any prospects of renegotiating the deal. امیدهایی که اعضای جدید دولت آمریکا دارن و ادعا می کنند که ایران باید به توافق برگرده نه منطقیه نه هیچگاه عملی خواهد شد منطق اونه که اونی که خارج شده برگرده ما که در داخل توافق هستیم اقدامات لازم رو اون زمان انجام خواهیم It is important to reiterate the latest statement by the International Atomic Energy Agency which is tasked under the 2015 nuclear deal to monitor Iran's compliance In its report to the IAEA Board of Governors on January 11th, Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi warned that the nuclear deal with Iran must be revived within the coming weeks after the Islamic Republic resumed 20% uranium enrichment, which significantly shortens Iran's potential path to 90% purity required for a nuclear bomb. Furthermore, Tehran's parliament threatened to curb access for IAEA inspectors by next month, February the 21st. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up India once again in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Umevorach, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.